Research in both humans and animals has shown that reconsolidation of memory causes an unstable state, leaving it vulnerable to modification and disruption, resulting in false memories. I think it's interesting the results that suggest that chimps may have particular cognitive abilities that are different and maybe in some aspects better than, than humans. LC 2018 among others suggests that treatments based on reconsolidation could help guide future research. These false memories appear true and as such are held with high confidence contributing to personal truths while having little to no basis in fact. Thus when challenged can trigger an emotional response. The Mandela effect widely covered on YouTube are collective false memories. This image doesn't exist. Don't panic, you're not alone. The vast majority of people are absolutely certain that they remember the Monopoly man with a monocle. So what's going on here? Well, numerous factors can interfere and distort memories, such as similarity of content to previous or subsequent experiences and pre or post overloading of sensory inputs. Two types of mistakes are often made when trying to recall events, those of forgetting or admission and false memories or commission. In 2004, Brainard and Rayner put false memories into two now widely accepted groups. Internal spontaneous memories resulting from mixed up thinking, these happen because to retrieve episodic memories, information not directly stored needs to be reconstructed using stored somatic memory. And in 2018, Zlomuzika et al. showed how failures in this complicated system resulted in false spontaneous memories. I'm Drifkin, Drew Griffin, I'll see you at 10 Eastern. Externally implanted memories, with false information coming from an outside source. Research has shown that memory traces are unstable and easily altered during retrieval before restabilization. Thus, every time a memory is recalled, there is a risk of alterations from more recent stimuli, and as memories are constantly rewritten upon reconsolidation, this altered trace affects all future thinking. To know his leader well, Johnson fails to answer a single question correctly, thanks in no small part to Paul Merton's interruptions. What did Ian Duncan Smith drop in 1992? His testicles. <laughs> These variances in memory have long been a problem in law enforcement. In 2011, a detailed examination of 300 convictions overturned by advances in DNA analysis by Garrett showed that in 70% of wrongful convictions, misidentification by high-confidence eyewitnesses were relied upon. However, some psychologists and legal professionals still point to the reliability of the witness as central to the validity of the identification. Okay, well, I'm a witness here. What I seen was a horrible, tragic situation. The guy was coming down, and I guess the police was trying to do a stop point. The man said, no, not today, and they began to rape. This reliability of the witness question has two fundamental things. Is the witness biased and likely to lie, and how good is their memory? Presuming some of Garrett's 70% weren't lying, their memory becomes key. Imagine being able to remember every minute detail of your life. You can... If memory is, as most people see it, a scale with a goldfish at one end and hyperphimesia at the other, memory is key. However, research has shown that even in cases of hyperphimesia, memory distortions and false memories are present and subject to the same pressures. And overall, everyone did about the same. The people with hyperthymesia even did a little worse. With These problems in memory have resulted in experts such as Wickstead changing their view on eyewitness reliability and in 2018 he called for the eyewitnesses in misidentification cases to be exonerated as memories are altered by the statement taking pre-tail practice undertaken. Pardon me? Seven single acts of indiscretion. Seven acts of indiscretion, only one of which he has any evidence of and all of which he himself is responsible for. Yes? Mrs. Cole. You're the victim here, the wife of a cold, distant workaholic, starved for affection, driven into the arms of another man. Seven. 
So how much does this affect our daily lives? Does a well-versed newsreader or public figure become polarising, with some agreeing no matter what and some disagreeing? Does a trusted source or role model for some become a liar to others? In the age of personal advertisement, agenda-driven news and personal bubbles, with flat earthers only talking to flat earthers, it is more important than ever that we communicate with people outside our bubble and try to see from their perspective. You know, sometimes our levels got a little bit raised, but you know what, We're, we all respect each other. No matter what you do, you've, you've heard all the arguments. There's not gonna be one argument where you're like, oh my gosh, I just changed my mind. No, it's never gonna, you know, people are who they are and it usually takes a certain situation happening. But I think it's healthy to have the dialogue. I think it doesn't happen enough. It happens too much behind our computers. As with all information, caution needs to be used, as advertisers, governments, media, corporations, and even conspiracy theorists use the fact that if your semantic memory is distracted from, say, a relative death rate in a war or disaster, and emotional responses can be triggered by small details, such as who did or didn't break the rules, or the difference in a populace, such as their appearance, action or beliefs. These differences can be used to lay the foundations for imposing their truth onto the populace and to deflect blame from any unkind facts.